Nitisha Lou Lattimore was born on November 8, 1991 in Cincinnati, Ohio. Her family described her as a firecracker whose smile could brighten a room. At the time of our story, she was 29 years old and had a three-year-old son named Nilo with a former partner named Antonio Hughes. Nilo was an adorable little boy who loved Elmo and Hot Wheels cars. Nitisha went back to school later in life to become a CNA and was focused on being a terrific mother to her son. In one of her last Facebook posts, she wrote, quote, All I want for Christmas is my son to have a good Christmas and got another job interview tomorrow. I hope I get it because I want my son to have a good Christmas. It's about the kids, and I want my son to be happy for Christmas, end quote. At the time of our story, Nitisha was dating a 20-year-old man with a checkered past named Deshaun Brown. He had been previously arrested for assault and given five years probation, as well as prior convictions for obstructing official business and falsification. According to neighbors, Deshaun had been asked to leave the couple's Walnut Hills apartment numerous times. Things had already started to go downhill for the couple. Natisha had become pregnant with Deshaun's child and later suffered a miscarriage. Now, in Deshaun's mind, this was all Nitisha's fault. He was too dumb to realize that miscarriage occurs in roughly 30% of pregnancies. None of this was Natisha's fault. However, Deshaun told his close friend, Jamisia Cobb, that he was very upset, and since Natisha killed their baby, he would do something to her baby, Nilo. But first, Deshaun was going to do something to his girlfriend. On December 5th, 2020, Deshaun attacked Nitisha with a knife at their apartment on the 2600 block of Melrose Avenue. She was stabbed multiple times and ultimately succumbed to her wounds. What makes this incredibly sad is the fact that the young mother actually cared for this man. Her final Facebook post reads, I love him forever, Deshaun Brown. The following day, Deshaun took three-year-old Nilo down to the Ohio River, just three miles away from his home, and tossed him into the water, alive. On December 11th, Deshaun placed Nitisha's remains into a body bag he had purchased on eBay and brazenly took an Uber to the Purple People Bridge, a pedestrian-only bridge that links Newport, Kentucky to Cincinnati, Ohio. Now remember, this poor young woman had been dead for almost a week. When the driver asked Deshaun what was in the bag, he said it contained clothing. At 3.15 a.m. the following morning, a security guard came across the bag under the bridge near the 700 block of East Pete Rose Way. The guard said he first thought the bag had Halloween props inside, but with one touch, he knew the contents were real. It was Nitisha and the Hamilton County coroner confirmed her cause of death as exsanguination due to sharp force trauma. Later, police found a stroller nearby that family members claimed belonged to Nitisha, along with a bloody Paw Patrol blanket. As it was unknown what happened to Nilo, the Cincinnati Police Department considered him a missing person. Authorities quickly zeroed in on Deshaun and suspected foul play soon after interrogating him. At 10.30 that same evening, he was arrested and charged with two counts of aggravated homicide, one count of abuse of a corpse, and one count of tampering with evidence. He was initially denied bond, which was later set at $1 million. He then motioned for his bond to be reduced, which was denied. Words don't, can't express how I feel about this monster who's trying to ask for a lower bond. I mean, he's got a lot of nerve trying to ask for a lower bond. And pray to God that nobody uh, throws some kind of wrench into what J Joe Dieters is trying to do. And I hope they let this man do his job and get this monster to go to hell. What he did was unexcusable. So, no, I don't, I don't forgive him. Let God forgive him. Deshaun Brown deserves nothing less than the death penalty. That's exactly what you deserve. No mercy at all. The icing on the cake? When Deshaun's close friend, Jamisia Cobb, found out that he was arrested and why, she came forward and shared with police what he had told her about wanting to harm Nilo. Uh, good afternoon. The Hamilton County Grand Jury has just returned an indictment against Deshaun Brown uh, for the murder 
of Natisha Lattimore and Nilo Lattimore. This charge that the grand jury returned includes the potential penalty of, the, of death for what he did to these two people. And we believe Natisha sat in that apartment for about five days. Um, and at some point he purchased a body bag after that from eBay. Is that right, Kurt? Yes, sir. And um, um, we have photos of him. We have video of him with the body bag. That's him carrying the body. In the wake of Deshaun's arrest, his mother released the following public statement, quote, I am truly sorry and I want to offer the family of Nitisha and Nilo sincere condolences for this difficult time. This has completely broken our hearts and leaves us in shock. Deshaun was raised in a good family who was supportive, loving, and caring. We were there for him through tough times and encouraged him to get the help he needed to cope with his mental health issues. The system often leaves people with mental health issues with nowhere to go and no immediate resources. I spoke to Nitisha and advised her to stay away from my son and for my son to stay away from her, but both of them did not want to listen to my advice. We will continue to pray for the family as we are heartbroken as well that this has happened. Words cannot express the hurt we feel as well. May God continue to wrap his loving arms around you." End quote. Bundled in coats and hats, standing with candles in the rain, friends and family of Nitisha gathered on the Ohio side of the Purple People Bridge for a vigil. At their gathering spot on Butler Street off of East Pete Rose Way, Nitisha's family held hands and hugged. Loved ones lined the side of the bridge with candles, two teddy bears, and photos of the slain mother holding her missing son. They shared memories of Nitisha, her smile, her sense of fashion, the song she rapped. They laughed at the funny questions she used to ask. Nitisha's aunt, Heather Jackson Lattimore, led a prayer, asking that God will watch over the detective still searching for Nilo. She said, quote, Whatever pain we bring to this gathering is the pain we share. Even as we struggle to rebuild our lives, we reach out to one another and above, end quote. The search continues today for a missing three-year-old boy, Nilo Lattimore, who was last seen on December 4th. Meanwhile, his mother, Nitisha Lattimore, was found stabbed to death on Saturday near the Purple People Bridge. Reporter Mariel Carbone is live right now at Yateman's Cove, where crews are continuing the search efforts here along the river and in the river. And Mariel, what's happening there this afternoon? Yeah, Craig, well, crews packed up about two hours ago, but not before a dive team was in the river along the river line, really launching from that sandy area behind us. A boat with sonar launched out here and canine units were out here as well. All of them just looking for any clues to what happened to Nilo. Meanwhile, back at uh, home, his neighbors are just praying for a safe return. Down along the river's edge, crews are searching for clues. While a few miles away, neighbors are searching for answers. It's been the only thing on my mind since I found out, and uh, my wife and I have both lost a couple of nights of sleep. Chad Hagler lives in the same building as three-year-old Nilo Lattimore, who he says is always smiling, always happy. Energetic, full of life. He's sweetheart. He's a sweetheart. He's what else can you say about an angel like that? Nilo was reported missing Saturday afternoon. The same day, his mother, Nitasia Lattimore, was found dead near the Purple People Bridge. A stroller belonging to the family was found nearby, but no Nilo. According to police, the boy was last seen on December 4th at his Walnut Hills apartment. That's where police say 20-year-old Deshaun Brown killed his mother. He was never really nice. He was not supposed to even be here. Um, he was kicked off the property several times. Neighbor Tamara Paddock says Brown caused trouble in the building, but she's trying to stay focused on Nilo. My main concern right now is that the little boy is somehow found safe. While also processing the unthinkable. Anybody dying is heartbreaking, but for a little boy to lose their mom and then not know where that little kid is, is it's devastating. Pay attention. Um, you know, we've gotten into a day and age where we don't know our neighbors. We, we don't know who's around us. And, uh, and as it's proven here, it, it can be deadly. 
And neighbors say that the family only lived in that apartment complex for about six months. Now, when we were there today, detectives were still going through the unit. It's unclear if they're searching anywhere else aside from the apartment as well as down here by the river. Reporting live at Yatemans Cove, Marielle Carbone, WCPO 9 News. During his pretrial hearing on June 23rd, 2022, Deshaun was attacked and punched in the face by none other than Antonio Hughes, Nyla's biological father. Antonio managed to rush Deshaun and punch him in the right side of the head before being restrained by two sheriff's deputies. He struggled as backup arrived to take him out of the courtroom. Antonio was later found in contempt of court and sentenced to seven days at the Hamilton County Justice Center. After protesters rallied around the courthouse supporting Antonio, he was released early. According to family friend Faith Burton, quote, everything inside him, just the pain and everything took over. He did what I think any of us would do, end quote. I think you're right, Faith. She continued, quote, I have to be on late night calls because he's on edge, you know? I couldn't live without my child either, you know? So I get his emotions. I get why he acted out in court today, end quote. Faith was among those who searched extensively for Nyla in the days and weeks after Deshaun's arrest. Quote, Tonio is heartbroken. He will never be okay, never. He will not heal until his son is brought home. You know, great families, both sides, the Lattimores, the Hughes, they're great, great people, which makes us want to work harder to bring him home because we see their pain. We're there with them grieving and we just, we feel like, you know, we haven't done a hundred percent until we recover him and bring him home, end quote. So where does this case stand? As of the date of this recording, Deshaun Brown has yet to be convicted. In fact, he filed a motion on his own behalf to dismiss the homicide charge against him as Nilo's body has never and unfortunately probably will never be recovered. On top of his motion to dismiss, Deshaun will also have a hearing on August 31st related to the death penalty aspect of his case, as that's what he's currently facing. Additionally, Deshaun and his defense team now claim he's mentally ill. And according to Ohio law, people with severe mental illness cannot be put to death. Nilo's body is still missing, despite Cincinnati police and volunteer groups searching more than 180 miles of the river. Even with dive teams and boats running sonar, the rough waters of the Ohio River made it impossible to find him. Naitisha was laid to rest in a private service arranged by Walker Funeral Home. Family members held a fundraiser at Stoney's Pub in Norwood to help raise money for the funeral costs. According to organizers, they hope the funds raised will help ease the emotional and monetary strain if and when they find Nilo's body.